the Cold War era, the most interesting and playable era in DCS, not just for Blue 4, but also for Red 4 players as well. Knowing where to plant your foot in the era is not as clear. It's not modern, where the planes are Swiss Army knives that can do everything. But this is Cold War. These planes are specialized, more niche, more soul. This video should act as a buyer's guide for the Cold War era and to make you feel informed before you open up your wallet. Additionally, towards the end of this video, we will go over some hardware recommendations. This is the second time I'm making this video and I thought it would be good to update the first one as the first one was made before our Cold War server launched, so I have made sure to pull data to help validate my points. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay, so if you're into that, please subscribe. Before we dive into this, per FTC guidelines, I must disclose some things. Now, while I was not paid for this video, I did receive some of these modules for free. I like to think I'm still bringing a neutral point of view to this. My hope is that you find a module you like and that you can enjoy yourself in the Cold War era. Let's jump into it. The first one is the F5E Tiger II by Eagle Dynamics, which is, by flight time, the most popular module on our Cold War server. Historically, Cold War servers have always anchored themselves around the F5 and the MiG-21. This is important to know because I would consider this a core module for our server. If you want to fly air to air and fly blue, this is your go-to module. The F5 is one of the easiest modules to jump into for a Cold War setting, but it also has a really high skill ceiling. This means that you can really sink your teeth into it to become more and more proficient in it. If you learn how to fly the F5 well, you should be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe versus any contemporary opponent. The flight characteristics of the F5 is that it has a pretty low thrust to weight ratio, but it has a decent top speed and amazing nose authority. This means that you need to keep your speed in mind how much you are pulling into turns to try to rate, but if you go too slow, you always have the option to go for scissors. If you would like to know more, the video in the top right dives deeper into the F5. Now the cons of this plane are that it cannot carry that much. A maximum of two air-to-air -air missiles. Additionally, the air-to-ground capabilities are somewhat limited and the most proficient use of air-to-ground is really just using unguided rockets. Lastly, this module is an older module. In the community, this plane gets a bit of flack of how old it is, but ED did announce they are doing an overhaul of it. When it comes, we do not know, but the state of the module is at a place where I would not dissuade people from getting it. In general, I think this is a good pickup for any player that wants to play blue in a Cold War setting. Next, we have the second most popular module on our server, which is the MiG-21 by Magnitude 3. Like the F5, historically, the MiG-21 is considered a core module for Cold War servers, and typically scenarios revolved around the MiG-21. If you fly red, this is a core module. The MiG-21 is typically seen as not as approachable as a F5. Decisions on it are quirky. It may not seem straightforward, especially if you're coming from Western planes. I think that the perception of the community is a bit oversold and probably a reflection of most DCS players who are used to flying modules that do a lot of hand holding like the Hornet. To some, the MiG-21 can feel like it is trying to kill you, but that is because it is not being flown correctly. You don't need to be an expert in the MiG-21 to be able to fly it. You just need to know how the MiG-21 flies and this goes back to what I was saying about how niche and how much soul these Cold War planes have. The MiG-21, in my opinion, is peak soul for DCS. The poor visibility, the near useless RWR, and the Delta Wings add a lot of complexities for new Cold War players that may trip people up. While it does have its complexities, the MiG-21 has some very good strong points which makes it a menace. It's not trying to kill you, you're just flying it wrong. Lean into its strengths. The flight characteristics of the MiG-21 is the high thrust to weight ratio, the ability to carry up to six missiles, and having a radar and an IFF system. While your RWR, in my opinion, somewhat useless, you can use your radar and IFF to approach fights in an informed way. You can use your thrust to weight ratio to take fights vertical. As you build muscle memory and start to avoid pulling too hard and flopping about, you will become proficient in this plane. If you want to see a video of the MiG-21 in action, you can see one in the top right. I have a lot of MiG-21 videos on this channel, so, so, so feel free to poke around. This plane also has a decent amount of air-to-ground capabilities, slightly more than the F-5. The S-24 rockets on it are particularly strong, and the air-to-ground air to ground missiles are good fun. With that said, this plane is not a total mud mover like the Frogfoot, and your limit to four weapon pylons means you can do some air-to-ground but you will not be the king of mud pushing. Just know that the lovers of this plane are a legion and they take it as a point of pride that they can excel in this thing. 
I would go as far to say that if you fly red, you need to have this module. Next, we have one of the newest additions to the Cold War scene, which is the Mirage F1 by Argus. This was one of the most highly anticipated launches in the DCF Cold War scene because it was the first mid Cold War fighter to be released in a really long time. At the time of this recording, the module is still in early access, but it is in a good flyable state. This plane is also very popular. Looking at the launch of our server, it is the number fifth most popular module, but the Mirage F1 was not out when the server was released. When we look at the last month of data, it is actually number three. This plane doesn't have the best acceleration, but it has a high top speed, so it is similar in regards to the F5, but unlike the F5, it has a radar, but no IFS system. This is a very unique thing. This is the only module in DCS that has a radar-based missile, but no IFF system. This plane was exported widely, so it can fit both red and blue. For blue, it is nice because it can carry up to four missiles, and for red, it is nice because it can act as a fast strike aircraft due to its somewhat impressive air-to-ground loadout. Glossing over a lot of details, I would say that this plane, in my mind, acts as a good blend between the MiG-21 and the F-5 and is a natural pick for the Cold War setting. It has some quirks like the MiG-21, but it is easier to learn how to fly than the MiG-21. It just doesn't have as much nose authority as the F-5, and at low speeds, it can get quite squirrely. To get an idea of how you may want to approach fights, you may want to check out this video in the top right for more information. Lastly, the air-to-ground capabilities on this plane are good and has more flexibility than both the MiG-21 and the F-5. Now, as this module is still being built, there are some things about it that must be said. There is more to come. Argus plans to release four different versions of the Mirage F1, so while the release cost of this plane seems quite high, you are going to get four different variants of the plane. How long that takes, no one knows. Additionally, there is a calculation you have to do in your head. The F5 and MiG-21 are solid buys if you want to fly air-to-air -air for either blue or red. Buying this plane means you're getting another air-to-air -air focused plane that may be on one side or on the other depending on the server or the server scenario. So the question for you is do you want to grab another air to airplane or do you want to branch out and to get a more air to ground focused module? You have to ask yourself what you really want to do. Keepler's Vigan, the fourth most popular module since the release of our server. Now that we've established what I would call three go-to air to air cold war aircraft, we can go into the more niche ones. And it is a niche one. It's made to fly low and fly fast. It's tailor-made to do pre-planned strike packages. And with your speed and payload, you can do a serious amount of damage. Doing raids with friends can be an incredible experience as you race the target while avoiding interception. Now, some of the particulars of this plane. While it can carry four to six missiles, it is a, it's very easy to compressor stall on this plane. Like the MiG-21, it has delta wings, which can let you whip it around but the delta wings can act as an air brake. If you pull too hard, you can quite literally choke out your own engines of air. It's not the most capable air-to-air -air fighter. Its focus is really on air-to-ground. Additionally, and I think this speaks to the people who are more time-limited, the Viggen is a very unique plane. It is the only Swedish aircraft in DCS. The systems feel custom for this plane. So very little system knowledge can be translated from this plane to others. For me personally, who is a bit time crunch, I will forget how to use certain things and not want to relearn it, so I will not fly it as often as I would as I would like. With that said, this plane is considered beloved and it is a good module and probably one of the reasons why Heepler is so loved in the community. Next, we have Razbam's MiG-19, which is my favorite module to fly in a Cold War setting. I think this plane acts as the easiest point of entry into DCS Cold War for players who are coming from a World War II background. While this plane is not the most capable plane, it does feel like a natural step from World War II to Cold War, and there is a f and there's very little to learn in terms of systems, which means you have to rely almost entirely on your ability as a pilot. The plane has an insane thrust to weight ratio. It can climb like a rocket, and it can rate fight quite well. You fight your opponents by wearing them out to the point where they can't maneuver to tee up an easy shot for one of your two missiles or for one of your cannons. Now, with that said, what is bad about this plane, it has terrible systems, because it has no systems, basically. The RWR can only tell you if someone is behind you, so you will get absolute zero warning if someone has fired on you from any aspect except from directly behind. Your radar is useless in a multiplayer environment. You can only carry two missiles. You have very little ammo on your cannons, and the air-to-ground weaponry is minuscule. 
This plane is for people who want to fight in knife fights. Again, for someone who plays World War II and wants to get into jets but has avoided it due to the systems, this is a very good entry point. For people who are brand new to flying and have no idea how to dogfight, I would avoid this plane. I genuinely think this is a very fun plane to fly and I really think that people underestimate this plane. Some people typically say that the module could use some updating with the artwork, but I have never really found that to bother me. So while I do love this module, the popular opinion does not agree with me and the numbers back that up. This is the ninth most popular module on the server. It is a niche pick for MIG lovers who want to do air to air in a setting where they won't get Fox 1 constantly. A good video on what the MiG-19 is like can be found in the top right. From here we can tackle FC-3, which I think is one of the best buys in DCS. The FC-3 pack contains the F-15, the MiG-29, FC-27, the SU-33, A-10, and the SU-25 Frogfoot. This is the SU-25A, not the T. Some people do not like these planes because they are not full fidelity and avoid flying these planes. I love these planes. Key Mapper has the best level of standardization between all planes in DCS. It offers a wide variety of planes that let you fly on both Cold War and Modern servers. If you want to do serious air to ground, then you need this pack because of the A10 and the SU25 are in this. They are by far the most capable air to ground platforms on our Cold War server. If you want to get an idea of what it's like to fly the SU25, you can see this video in the top right as a guide. Next we move on to the Korea airplanes, which were world class in their time, but for the DCS universe they are in a weird spot. This is important to note because I would like to start to transition the recommendations from just our Cold War server to across the entire game. The MiG-15 and F-86 start to enter the territory where your purchase will be less and less viable across the entire game and only on some select servers. Our Cold War server and the Korea 52 server are really the only two places where these planes are viable, and it is a stretch to call it viable on our own server. They are just sprinkled in, they are not the centerpiece. Think of it as a garnish. Now, with that said, these planes are for the true enthusiasts. You are fighting at a big disadvantage. I would not recommend these planes for new players. They are both slow, they are turn fighters, and your success is dependent on the enemy not flying well. But if you do find yourself against a foolish opponent, you can punish them and come out feeling great. A David versus Goliath type matchup. Please note the MiG-15 does not carry missiles or rockets while the Sabre does. The Sabre is just much more capable from an air-to-air -air and an air-to-ground perspective. So if you're going to get one of these, I would probably recommend getting the Sabre over the MiG-15. Next up we have the F-14 from Heepler. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because this plane is a good purchase for DCS in general and not just for Cold War. This, pl this plane is a fan favorite among the entire community. It is a monster in a Cold War setting because this plane was so far ahead of its time. This plane was so strong in its era that it is frequently still used in modern scenarios because of its ability to carry the Phoenix. And just a note on these Phoenixes, they are so strong that they are frequently restricted on Cold War servers. This is a good solid buy, especially if you have a friend because you can, you can both play together. Just know that the F-14 is not necessarily a core module on most Cold War servers because it's so heavily restricted, it's not always viable to play it. So from an air-to-air -air perspective, you probably want the Mirage F-5 or the MiG-21 for your day-to-day -day go to fighter. The Trainers. These are, in my opinion, the most odd planes in DCS. I do not spend any time flying these, so in good faith I can't really put a full endorsement on these. Now, while I do not play them, the people that do play them do like them. They play similarly to the Korea planes, where you are in a David versus Goliath setting. These planes have no chance in a modern uh, environment. So you are really limited in where you can play these things unless you like doing aerobatic shows. The helicopters, the whirly birds that stay low and play a fundamentally different game from the planes. I'm going to bundle all of these together because by no means am I a helicopter expert. I play helicopters maybe once in a blue moon. With that said, I think that the helicopters are a decent investment because they can live in both Cold War and Modern. The Hind is by far my favorite helicopter for those Cold War settings. The module had one of the best releases ever in DCS, and it is beloved by its users. It is also the strongest helicopter in a Cold War setting due to its payload and speed. It can just carry more, it can do more, and it's faster than all the other Cold War helicopters. The transport helicopters are shared across Modern and Cold War, so they are good buys if you do like helicopters. Now the thing that must be mentioned here is that there is a big discrepancy between capabilities for the Modern helos and the Cold War helos. The Cold War helos slant more toward red in terms of capabilities, while there is more parity in a modern setting for blue versus red helicopters. In terms of priority, I would recommend getting the Hind, 
then the Mi-8 or the Huey, and then the Gazelle for colder helicopters. The Gazelle seems to be the most controversial her helicopter in DCS because of some lingering development that needs to happen. As I'm not a helicopter expert, I would recommend hopping in our Discord to get more questions answered on this particular topic. One last note is that you can tell, and how I mentioned at the start, this was really focused on our Cold War server because we are the largest Cold War server in DCS. This should give you an idea for of the playability and viability of your module purchases. For people playing other Cold War servers that stretch more into modern settings, you may want to weigh your purchase of how viable it is on our server and others. Now with that said, you may want to also think of hardware or peripherals, which is the final point I want to make in this video. I would like to introduce the idea of growing into your system. Most people seem they start off with the AK-47 joysticks, aka the Logitech 3D Pro, and then start to upgrade into mid-range sticks before getting into a top tier stick like BKB or Verbal. And if you think about it, you end up spending a lot of money because you probably end up buying three different sticks before you're finally kind of at home. One stick in particular that seems to get overshadowed in, the, in this discussion is the VKB NXT Evo, which is a stick that I use. I would like to preface this by saying that I did get some hardware as a gift from VKB, and I was not asked to make a video for them, but being a fan of their gear and purchasing from them, I thought it'd be prudent to talk about them in this video as you may be considering peripherals. This stick has the ability to grow with you, and I think that is a really compelling thing because so few companies make modular setups. By starting off with the VKB NXT Evo, you get a fantastic stick. Again, it's a stick that I use, but if you want to start transitioning into more button-heavy modules, especially modern ones, you may need more buttons. This is where their throttle combo comes in. You can easily add more to this stick because they are modular. You can quite literally build a HOTAS off of the base stick and that is a very neat thing that helps break up the purchases of your setup, which lets you build into a more permanent system over time, instead of just dropping $1,000 onto a full-blown HOTA setup on day one. Something to think about, I think this is a very unique thing on the market, and I wish I knew about it when I first started it out, because I would have done this if I would have just simply known about it. Lastly, VKB are apparently fans of the channel and our Cold War community. They have made a 5% discount code. Just use coupon code Enigma on their website. I do not get anything out of it, but I thought it would be good to partner with them because why not? It's money saved for you. Let me know what you think about these recommendations below. If you think I forgot something, please let me know in the comments below. This video will stay up until further updates come out, like the Big 23 and F4, and then I will redo this video. But from as far as I can tell, the Big 23 and F4 will probably be core purchases for a Cold War setting. It would be an absolute scandal if these modules come out uh, in a bad state. I'm sure they're, they're going to be good. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. It really helps a small channel like myself. Thanks and have a good one.